Wear Whistle Shave is one of South Shield's true eccentrics who use music to promote his own brand of zany humour. Oh, oh, Weavis, yeah. why? I remember Weavis, aye. Pretty well. <laughs> aye. Well, thinking Weavis Jeez, came with, with a tube, especially, you know what I mean? Uh, no, no. Mr. Stair Utes and things like this, you know, and Weavis was different class. You know what I mean? He's, he's out there, you know, which he always was, you know, with the, the Dennis Smokes Tabs EP and things like that. And I had all of them, they're probably worth a fortune now again, but I haven't got them anymore, you know. Changed his name, didn't he? Changing his name, Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart, yes. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. You went to me uh, Bruno's wedding, and is it is it? Present he brought a Asda bag and he brought a boy leg and a bed, bed spring for a wedding present. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as a kid, I'd been to his gigs at Bonebroke Hall and St Aidan's Church up near the lower top. Um, he used to have some strange sort of admission fees. It used to be slices of bread or boiled eggs, and you could even be caught with a forgery if the entry fee was a white slice of bread. You'd get wrong for bringing a brown bread. You wouldn't get in. If it was a, a hard boiled egg, they wouldn't let you in with a soft boiled egg and they might be prone to testing it on your head to make sure that you hadn't brought a forgery with you. While we're in London, um, we happened to just pull up in a, in a garage to get some petrol and by some amazing coincidence, Kenny Everett had come into the, to the garage at the same time. Oh yes, Kenny Everett, crazy Kenny Everett. And as he got out of his car to get his petrol, um, Wavis and Arthur Two Stroke, who was in the car at the same time, um, both put on the, the 18 inch polystyrene noses and, and whipped out onto the forecourt to try and get a photo with them. And we had our nozzles on, you know, so we, we, we kind of walked after it. It was Kenny! Kenny! Because this is crazy, Kenny Everett, you know. Kenny! Kenny! Can I be in your back? And he kind of turned around and he saw us and he froze to the spot. And I, I hope we still got the photograph of him. He's, he's, his face, it's a, it's a, a picture. Can I be in your back? And uh, it was Kenny! Kenny! Yeah. Expecting crazy Kenny yeah. to harmonise yeah. with us crazy folk. I've got to kill you, But what did he do? Yeah. He ran off! And uh, made a run for the, for the office to pay for his petrol while somebody else was filming the car. He did a runner! Off he went out of sight! We were chasing him around the petrol pumps first of all, I recall. And it was only after a couple of minutes that, we, that he realised we didn't, didn't mean him any harm that he, he hung around and waited for when and let me take the photographs of him on, on the forecourt. Crazy Kenny? My wife don't understand. I don't think so. We've also um, met up with Toya, um, Debbie Harry. He tried to handcuff himself to Debbie Harry. He, he was polite enough to ask permission. I've got no idea really why anybody in the right minds was going to give you consent to, to, to be handcuffed to some guy in a, in a tartan tam o and, a, and I think at this stage the noses had got even longer so this one was probably in excess of two foot and was that long it needed a little, uh, little wire support to hold it in place. So why anybody would want to agree to be handcuffed to anybody like that, I don't know. And needless to say, she didn't agree. But having said that, she was game enough to stand there and have a photograph taken. We've got the evidence of, of all of that.